Want to see something really exciting? Introducing the Metacomet Brujo with over 90 horsepower of four-cylinder excitement. Finally, a sports car that doesn't break the bank. From Metacomet. Perhaps no car in the world deserves to be called one of a kind more than a Pontiac Fiero. And that's straight from the brochure, just, just by the way. What's going on guys? My name is Consider and today we are going to be making a knockoff Fiero. And we're going to go with this body style, which I know is really not a Fiero, but it's the closest thing available. So we're going to use it. We'll just munch the dimensions a bit and I think we can get something that's a little less Corvette out of this. Right, unfortunately, plastic isn't an option, which is very disappointing. I guess, I don't know, I don't want the weight. We'll go with aluminum. I, I guess, I don't know. I know aluminum is a bit more expensive, but I just kind of want to emulate the lower weight of plastic because this thing's probably going to be heavy regardless. <laughs> Space frame. Yep. Yes, we'll do we'll do mid longitudinal and then we'll do a double wishbone up front and uh, we'll do a double wishbone in the back too. We'll do, we'll do a double double. The new project, the under power, power E. All right, so we're gonna do about a two and a half. Okay, that's not gonna fit. Let's go for mid transverse. That's much better. So we can squeeze in. Oh gosh, that's not much. Uh, uh, just about a two liter inline four. A five cylinder just kind of feels blasphemous. We'll, we'll stick with the four cylinder. Cast iron. We'll go with overhead cams, and we'll go with cast iron heads. That's that's a beauty right there. And then I'm just gonna leave all this stuff cast, and then I'll upgrade it as needed. I, I really don't know how much I'm gonna need that to be upgraded. <laughs> we'll go with single point DFI and a performance intake, and then we'll run it off of regular. Go for a short cast exhaust. Uh, we'll give it uh, we'll give it a big boy exhaust. Uh, we'll do a, a two-way cat, none, and then none, because we want this to be loud, which I have no doubt it's going to be, even if it fails to do anything else. Oh, we're at 90 horsepower. That's actually about what I was shooting for, and that's at 5,800 RPM. That's that's not bad. I mean, it's it's pretty bad, but like, compared to my goals, it's not that bad. So I could just, you know, rev this into a wall and call it good, honestly. And if I open up the RPM limit, I would then need to improve the pistons and the conrods, which I don't really know if I want to do, especially since I don't know how much more we're going to get out of it. I don't think it's worth it. Let's just rev it into a wall at 93. It sounds great. 93 horsepower. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a beast. And that was very fast oh that sounds way better than it is that sounds really good anyway that was very fast to get to that point but uh, I guess we're on to the design part now. This looks nothing like a Fiero, my goodness. Whatever, we still got we still got time to make it look more Fiero-y. That actually helped quite a bit, just doing that little little nudge nudge there on the bumper. And then we can do that that's that's horrible. Oh, it can stick out further too. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. That just looks that's just that yeah, that's just repulsive. Paint. Let's let's go with yellow. Just just bright yellow. Man, this is this is going really fast. Like I don't I don't think I've ever gotten to this part this quickly. I've also haven't named it yet. This is gonna be called uh, the Metacomet Brujo. Doesn't that just make you wanna drive this thing? I, I know it doesn't for me. Actually, I'm kind of excited to drive this. I have <laughs> it's like a morbid curiosity. So I have a vague idea what I want to do for the grills. I just need to find something that's mostly square. That really looks like where the headlights should be, but no, that's that's the grill. And then we'll just put maybe one of these over the top of it. You know, that's actually kind of working for me. I do think we ought to switch the uh, turn signal over to that side, though. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely not beautiful, but it's I don't hate it. Nextly, that's that's not a word, but next, let's go ahead and put some pop-ups on this thing. So uh, the pop-ups are just gonna be straight in the middle. It's fine. That's kind of nasty, actually. Let's make these thinner. It kind of looks like a common turismo, actually, with that unit and then the, the pop-ups. Maybe I can find a different unit to take that spot. I could do this. But I really don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I could also just go the route where it doesn't have headlights except for the pop-ups, which seems dangerous but I might I might just do it okay there's our turn signals this thing looks interesting 
Badging time. Okay, there's our badge. It's just all the way down there for some reason. Now, side indicators. I'm just gonna grab the exact same ones, actually. <laughs> Except they're gonna be plastic this time. And then I'm gonna grab a piece of plastic, and we're just gonna run this all the way down the side of the car. We can't have anyone thinking that this car is actually quality, you know what I mean? There we go. And I guess that we should also include some mirrors on this car. The name of the game here is plastic. Okay, these aren't gonna work. They don't, they don't mount right. So let's get something cheaper like these. There we go, that's much better. All right, what's next on the crap train? Uh, let's do, let's do a fuel cap. And now I think that we need just a really unnecessary wing, preferably one way too wide. There we go, that's completely unnecessary and fits, fits, fits the bill wonderfully. Before we get too into this back though, I just wanna see how much can I, that looks so much better. How are we gonna do this back? Uh, there's definitely one tail light that's coming to mind right off the bat. Yes, perfect. So I'm gonna need a piece of plastic that just sits right in here and just, you know, occupies all of this space. That actually looks pretty solid. Yeah, this is almost exactly what I wanted. Wow, that's great. Although I think this plastic should continue all the way around. Okay, that looks really bad when you get close, but let's just... Let's just agree not to look at it closely, okay? Let's get a license plate in here. Not that one. Okay, these are huge. Yay, there we go. Okay, that, that part's dealt with. So now we just need an exhaust pipe. I, I love these on, like, the budget cars. <laughs> I don't know why. There we go. That's... That's pretty much it. I mean, what else can I do? I think... Maybe we can find a better spoiler. Unfortunately, I think that was the best... Nope, there's this one. This one could be pretty good. Alright, we're gonna go with that. Okay, so what else does the back need? Uh, it could use maybe something, I don't know, uh, maybe just another something down here. And then I feel like it could use definitely a badge. So let's put a badge on here. Okay, there's a badge on there. And now I'm thinking I'm gonna write this long meta comment word right across there. Beautiful. I think we've covered pretty much everything, except for the wipers, of course. But I'm curious to see how it would work to try and bring this trim around the front. I think it would be a nightmarish task, but at the very least I can get a little bit going. There, I can't think of any more useless piece of trim than that. It literally serves no purpose beyond just making the car look a little bit cheaper. Now, wipers, and then I think we're done. There, that's, that's, that's probably the worst job I've done with wipers yet. Could actually make this look so much better if I just flip them like this. These wipers barely even cover half the windshield, it's kind of sad. There. Wipers done. Where are the, like, just the weirdest looking rims? What, what looks like the rims that would be on this car? Like, I'm just looking at the brochure right now, and I'm, I'm just want something that kind of matches that kind of style. But there's just nothing of that out there. Actually, those aren't bad. Yeah, okay, we'll go with those. Drivetrain. Alright, we're gonna go for a four-speed manual. Top speed of 125, that's ambitious. Open diff. We'll go with medium compound radials. We'll just go with... Solid discs, front rear, no under tray. Two seats, we'll do a standard interior with a basic 8-track. We'll do hydraulic power steering. I guess we probably want ABS. <laughs> and then advanced 80s or standard 80s? We'll do standard springs, twin tube. How are we doing? Actually not bad, wow. And on top of that, 13 and a half miles per gallon. That's not terrible considering. I mean, it's not great considering either, but... <laughs> There's actually, that's actually terrible, what I was saying. This is a four-cylinder. Okay, let's sort out the tires, and then let's go and address the brakes. All right, that seems to be the sweet spot, but I'm a bit nervous about these front tires. You know what? That might be fine. 1.1G. Or, sorry, 1.01G. That's not terrible. I mean, especially considering some of the more recent cars. Oh, it doesn't like the tire compound with these. What if we do sports? Oh, wow, that actually just made things so good. But now the front tires are wide. I don't... I don't know if I particularly agree. Okay, 1.1, actually, and now it's perfectly happy with the tire size. So, I, I think I'm gonna leave that. Let's move on to brakes. All right, we got slight brake fade and low brake force in the back. Okay, brakes are sorted. Literally all it cares about now are dampers. I, I think that's everything, oh, gearing. Yes, gearing. We have zero wheel spin at the moment. Our top speed is still 125. There's literally no possible way to get wheel spin in this. It's ridiculous. This thing could actually be pretty fun, not gonna lie. So this is the Metacomet Brujo. 93 horsepower, 2,094 pounds, 4-speed manual, 
This thing could actually be really fun. How much does it want for it? What's the price here? 20,500. And uh, just a quick bit of information here. Automation calculates all of the currency in modern day. So if we wanted to adjust that for inflation, we got to adjust backwards. So that is a sale price of $8,556. You know something? I think that this is actually like unironically a really good car that has been made here today. I, I haven't driven it yet, but just based on its specs and everything, I think that this actually could be really good. And that makes me kind of sad, but also happy at the same time. Here's a quick look at the detailed stats page if you're interested. But yeah, it looks pretty decent. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this and we can find out how exactly it drives in Beam. Okay, so here it is in Beam in all its glory. And I gotta say, the front end, it's already aged poorly. <laughs> like, it's kind of a mixed bag. The back's actually kind of cool. And like, from this angle, it's cool. And from this angle, and then it's just got that bulging nose. I don't know. I don't hate it. I, I will admit, though, I have driven it around here a little bit. And I gotta say, I'm disappointed with how good it is. <laughs> Not to mention, it actually sounds great. And it doesn't accelerate all that slowly. You know, while we're here, uh, let's just go over to the Top Gear test track and see how it uh, does around that. Yeah, it's not the quickest off the line. But then again, if you were to buy this in the 80s, it would have cost you $8,000. It does get to freeway speeds pretty decently quick, though. Oh, okay. It does have a bit of a tendency to understeer. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't exactly want to turn in all that quick. It's also not really going to be setting any land speed records. Oh, oh, yeah, understeer. 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 Okay, we're out of that now. The handling's kind of whack. Like, <laughs> it is a little bit wonky. Alright, alright. Turn in nicely. Good enough. It's actually pretty solid. I don't know why I only said good enough. Well done. And through this section here, it's hard to do like a slight, a light turn. It's like, that's the minimum amount of turning you can do is just it jolts the whole car around. The brakes do seem to work really well though, which is not common for most of my cars. And stop, that was a 152. It's uh, it, it's it's not a bad car. Look, even the turn signals work. Isn't that incredible? Oh, but on downhill, downhill is where it thrives. Well, there you go. Just drive it downhill. It's remarkably grounded, honestly. <laughs> like, it's a bit twitchy if you try and turn it, but it's not gonna try, it's not gonna, like, lose control on its own. It'll just go wherever it's facing. And as long as you're gentle with the steering, it's, it's not gonna spin out or anything crazy. I'm a bit nervous about this, though. Yep, understeer. Can we clear it? No, we didn't. And we've died. There's the safety rating. You know, I think it basically comes down to this. You may not be the fastest car on the highway, and you may not have the prettiest, but you'd have a decently enjoyable car for quite a lot less than everyone else has. Also considering what you're getting, you're not getting junk either. I mean, well, you kind of are, but you know, it's not like the bottom of the pile junk. So what if you top out at 82? It's not like there's other cars on the road that are going to be flying around much faster than that, you know what I mean? It's not like you have to feel bad about getting passed by a fettuccine. Like, that's not embarrassing. The thing is, is that at the end of the day, you have a sports car. And you bought it for $8,000, and it's not like you can get a much better deal than that. Now that we've tested how this car drives, and the fact that it can't outrun that Raspberry, but now it's time to address the number one issue with the Fiero, and that was its reliability. And how better than by abusing the crap out of this car. So, this track is called Death Drome. It's basically Endurodrome, but even meaner. If the Brujo can make it through this whole track, then uh, I'd say we've built ourselves a pretty good discount sports car. And if not, then uh... We've made ourselves a pretty 
decent discount sports car. I mean, this is really not how you're supposed to do with a sports car. Regardless, let's go for it. Okay, right off the bat, that was not so hot. Let's go ahead and try that again. There we go. Right off the track. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't too great great for it. Well, this doesn't look very safe. What's gonna be down here? Oh, nothing. It's just... Okay, that was way more menacing than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, maybe not. Let's go this way this time. I don't think the car can make that jump. Through this part, it's really not doing too terribly. And then there's mud. Which momentum saved us. That's fine. Uh, do we wanna go left or... I'm thinking probably not left. Let's go this way. Oh gosh, this is not good for the car. Oh no, there's there's no way. Okay, let's do the good old fashioned tactic that I call go around. Excellently executed. <laughs> and pothole. And pothole. Oh gosh. Pothole again. How are the I'm actually amazed the wheels are hanging on. This is not nice on this car at all. Oh gosh. Oh no. Oh man, okay, that was, that was very aggressive, but yeah, it actually looks pretty, pretty stable. Okay, we hit that a bit hard, now the radiator's leaking. And now we're stuck because the front bumper's bent too far down. Okay, so we're just gonna go this way, that looks real safe. Okay, well it's making it up the hill. Sort of, come on, you can do it. Or, or perhaps you can't. I will say though, the engine and all that kind of stuff, that's hanging on pretty well. I mean, this isn't exactly light stuff that we're given this car. Like, this is this is some pretty aggressive stuff it's going through. Okay, we're gonna go up here this time. And I'm, I'm not optimistic for it. This looks bad. Uh-oh. Well, that actually hung together pretty well. What's around this corner? Just more bumps? More bumps. Okay, and this is this is where we messed up last time. Alright, so we made it down there, and then this is where we couldn't get past last time because the bridge is dumb. Well, it made it through the off-road segment, and it actually doesn't look as bad as I would have expected it to. I think it's just lacking the ground clearance to make that bridge, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop it over here, and we'll, uh, we'll get back to it. I don't know if it has the power to make it up here, especially in this state. Come on. I believe. Oh, yes. Okay, then we need to go around this sign. Because obviously we can't go through it. Ow. And then, back to the start. It did it. Kind of. It's not really looking too hot, though, let's be honest. Well, since this is, in fact, an 80s car, I figure... Let's go ahead and take it around the most neon-looking track in the game, Glow City. All right, the final test, and it begins with an uphill climb that I don't even know if it can do. I believe in you, you very unlikely to succeed little car. You can do this. Okay, this isn't that bad of a hill. This is doable. I think it was probably intended to be done at more than 25 miles an hour, though. But unfortunately, 25 miles an hour is what I have to offer. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, so far, so good. Don't go off the edge. Oh, God. Um, no, this isn't happening. Alright, just... Okay, guess we're starting over then, because this is literally the start line. I don't know if it's possible to make that loop with this car. Like, this isn't happening. The highest you can get is this downhill section, and it barely even passes 80. Okay, come on. Don't repeat this. Don't repeat this. Don't repeat this. Damn it. I'm just trying to land on that part, at least. I know I can't make the loop, but I'm just trying to land on the right part of the track. Okay, let's just, uh, please land on the wheels. Yeah, that was not the wheels that I was talking about. Oh, even though this video was for the, uh, Fiero-esque clone, we're gonna go ahead and finish it off with the Fettuccine, because I really want to make it around this track now. And not only can this thing do it, Okay, maybe it can't. I forgot how badly it understood. Okay, even though this video is about the, uh, Fiero clone, uh, we're gonna finish it off with the Deco X because I really want to get around this track and I'm pretty sure this car actually can do it. I just hope it can make the loop. 
Oh, this thing can definitely make the loop. I just can't see what's going on. Okay, we're all good. We're good. We're good, right? Yes, okay, we're good. Before you guys close out this video, though, I just want to let you know another plan with this Fiero type car. As you guys probably know, one of the most common things done with the Fiero was turn it into a different car. For that reason, I'm going to be releasing the dot car files for the Brujo, and I want to see what you guys do with it. Make a kit car out of it. So there's no restrictions or anything. This isn't for a competition or a challenge per se. This is this is more just for a showcase video that I'm going to do later on to follow up this episode. So while keeping it kind of a Brujo, make it something completely different. If that makes any sense. Basically, just try and force it into be something else. Like, try and turn it into a McLara, or a Common Turismo, or or a Roma, or just just go wild with it. So I'll be releasing the .car file on the Discord. If you're not a part of that, there will be a link down in the description. And we'll be setting up another place on the Discord channel as well, where you can go and submit that. And I'm probably going to be making that video sometime next week. So let's just say one week from whenever this video goes up is the deadline. And uh, I don't know when I'm going to be posting this, so whatever it says on the screen right now is going to be the deadline. But yeah, I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. And again, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys in the next one.